Hey, what's going on everybody? Gareth here with FCP Euro. Welcome back to another DIY video. Today we're going to be replacing a front wheel bearing on this F30 328i xDrive behind us. This is going to be the same process for any F22, F23 2 Series xDrive vehicle, any F30, F31 3 Series xDrive vehicle, and any of the F32, F33, and F36 4 Series xDrive vehicles. It's not that bad of a process. Uh, we do have a couple things we will have to note, but we'll get into that in the DIY video. But before that, let's talk about some of the tools we're going to need, and we'll go ahead and jump into it. All right, so some of the tools you're definitely going to need in order to replace a front wheel bearing on an F30 3 Series xDrive car. 17 millimeter socket for the lug bolts, 18 millimeter socket for the brake caliper carrier bolts, six millimeter Allen for the brake rotor set screw, a TP60 or T60 uh, socket, depends on which version of the wheel bearing that's currently installed in the vehicle. You may in fact need both, depending on whether you have an originally installed bearing uh, and you're updating to a new style bearing. So definitely want to look into the TP60 at the very least because that's not too common. 17 millimeter Allen for the axle bolt, and I have a couple of different adapters just for um, these uh, sockets and ratchets that I'm using. So I have a 3 8 to a half inch there and a two inch half inch extension. Flathead screwdriver is really good for locking up that front brake rotor against the caliper so it doesn't spin when you're braking torque on the axle bolt. A couple different ratchets, a really long breaker bar is gonna be super useful. A torque wrench capable of doing 210 new meters of torque. Plus, if you have the ability to do torque angle on that uh, torque wrench, that's gonna be super helpful as well. Gloves are always useful, lights even more useful, and then some of the uh, other tools that you might want, which are not necessarily requirements, but definitely helpful, a die grinder with a very mild uh, abrasive on it, just so you can remove any corrosion on the knuckle, half inch um, impact gun for removing some of the bigger bolts, makes it a little bit quicker and easier, and these electric ratchets are also super useful. So don't necessarily need those. You can get by with just a normal Scotch-Brite pad instead of this, but this is faster. So we're gonna take the path of least resistance as we have access to the tool. Uh, but other than that, now that we've talked about the tools, let's go ahead and get into the job, see what this is all about. So the first step with any DIY where you'd be working underneath the car, you wanna make sure it's properly supported. Obviously in the shop, we have the luxury of the lift. If you're at home and you have to do this uh, on jack stands, make sure the vehicle is level. Make sure it is safe underneath and it's not going to fall off those jack stands. So we also have to remove our set screw for the brake rotor. And then we have to brake torque on this uh, axle bolt right here. Easiest way to do that, you take a flathead screwdriver, shove it down the veins of the rotor. Should give you enough to be able to counter hold the brake away for that axle bolt. This right here is a six millimeter Allen. These are known to corrode in place. If you have an issue, strip the uh, hex out of that. You can go ahead and take a chisel and probably knock it out that way or just drill a hole right through it. And uh, depending on damaged threads on the hub, you can go ahead and put a new one in there. But if you do damage it, these little set screws only hold the rotor in place for assembly purposes. Technically don't need it. Just threw a lug bolt back in so I can, uh, you know, basically the hub doesn't spin behind the rotor. Uh, you know, you could leave the set screw in for that, but the set screw is pretty small and there's a lot of breakaway torque on this bolt. So rather just use a lug bolt instead. This is a 17 millimeter hex or Allen. Next up, I'm gonna take off the caliper carrier bolts. Uh, they're 18 millimeter drive. And I have one of these caliper hooks just to hold on the caliper. I'm gonna basically hang it on the strut. The pad wear sensor, I'm just gonna unclip from that little tab there so I have free reign of this thing and I'm cheating with a swivel socket you can obviously use a wrench and a ratchet for this and then from here we'll go ahead and remove the brake rotor if your brake rotor is stuck to the hub because of corrosion you can always tap it with a hammer here on the on the front the vibration should break it free so from this point um, you can actually move the axle around you can see the splines right there in the back of the wheel hub. Uh, it's a little bit of a different design instead of the stub shaft going through the wheel hub. It interfaces with the back of the wheel hub via these splines. The wheel hub is held on to the knuckle here with four T60 torques. This is an originally installed wheel hub assembly, which is why it has the T60 torques. The updated wheel hub assembly uses um, Torx Plus 60, so TP60. Uh, and it's also a thread pitch change. So this style is M12 by one and a half. The newer style is M12 by one, two, five. So when you buy the new wheel bearing, 
you have to buy the new bolts. These are one-time use anyway, so you have to buy replacement bolts regardless. Uh, but with the updated wheel bearings, you have to use the Torx Plus 60 hardware. We'll talk about that in a second, but you can actually remove all four of these bolts with the axle still in place. You don't have to remove it, so pretty convenient actually. So to help gain better access to the back of these bolts, you can rotate the knuckle a little bit. So in this case, to get to these backward, or uh, these backside bolts, uh, just moved the steering to the right. And then to get to those bolts in the front, I'll move it back to the, uh, to the left. So like I said, these are T60. So this, these are the original installed bolts. You know, right there you can see that's a T60. And in terms of these bolts being difficult to remove, only a small portion of them actually protrude through the front of the hub. Uh, so if you wanted to, you could throw a little bit of penetrant on the front, basically here. Uh, that might help coming through the hub. But if the threads are relatively clean, they should come out easy. Once they break torque, uh, they come out super, super easy. And then obviously what's different about these bolts is they use this ball seat, which goes up against the knuckle here. So you can't exactly go and get these from your local hardware store. Like I said, these are one-time use only. You have to buy them when you buy the wheel bearing. And again, depending on which wheel bearing you have, you have to buy it appropriately. If you have an older wheel bearing that's M12 by one, M12 by one and a half, you need this style with the T60. If you have an updated wheel bearing, you need the one that's a Torx Plus 60 uh, because of the different thread pitch. Also goes without saying a flex head ratchet is super useful for this just because of the space constraints. And a long one is also useful. And what you want to do now is hold onto the hub uh, because it's not very likely for the hub to be uh, seized to the knuckle. In fact, if you grab it, you can actually move it around, which means it's not seized. So before you go ahead and rip out this bolt and let this thing fall down, hold on to it and then undo that last bolt. And there we go, it's the old wheel bearing. I don't know if you can hear that, but uh, it sounds pretty dry. And this car was making a little bit of a humming noise driving down the road from the front left corner. So I think this is probably the culprit. So here is the originally installed bolt. That's the Torx 60, which, you know, any, anybody who's worked on a BMW at any point has seen this before. Uh, this bolt right here, which is the new one, this is the Torx Plus 60 or TP60, and it looks like that. So if you don't have the Torx Plus 60, you know, you might be able to get away with the T60, but as you can see, uh, there's a whole lot of slop in that drive. And that's strictly because the standard Torx is very pointed. The Torx Plus is more of a square drive. It's like a, it's almost like a poly drive, I guess. Uh, but you can see the Torx Plus 60 locks in there, no problem. So you really wanna have one of these sockets for these wheel, uh, wheel bearing bolts. And another thing to note, if we do the little side by side comparison, uh, you'll see how the threads from the new bolt don't line up with the threads from the old bolt. And that's because there's a thread pitch difference. Diameter of the bolt's the same, but you know, it's 1.25 versus one and a half. So fine thread versus standard thread. So you can see we have a little bit of corrosion here on the face of the hub. That's where the wheel bearing sits. I wanna make sure I knock this corrosion back so the new wheel bearing sits flush. Uh, so just using a very gentle abrasive pad on this die grinder, and we'll go ahead and remove this corrosion and make it clean. Uh, so obviously one thing that you note here that is maybe different than what you've seen is this spline drive interface on the front of the axle and here on the back of the wheel hub. Uh, basically instead of this being a stub shaft, that spline that comes through the wheel hub, uh, these splines here uh, fit into the splines here. And I'd say the one nice thing about this is to replace an axle, you don't have to actually remove the wheel bearing or the wheel hub. Um, you can just leave this alone. It requires a whole lot of disassembly. The only disadvantage to the design, in my opinion, is if you don't get those splines lined up perfectly, uh, you run the risk of the splines skipping and uh, yeah, it'll destroy the axle, it'll destroy the bearing. So when you reassemble this, you really wanna make sure that the splines from the axle match up with the spline on the wheel bearing and that's just flush. Um, now's a really good time to look at your ABS wheel speed sensor. 
you know, if it's dirty, you can clean it off. Uh, you don't really need to remove this uh, at all. The magnet strip is here on the back of the bearing, as you can see right there. So it actually doesn't come into contact or you don't really risk damaging this. Um, another thing to note is this bearing only goes on one way. Uh, you can see this little notch here. That matches with this area here, which if this bearing were seized to the knuckle, you could use this as a prying point potentially to get it off. But basically, uh, this will only go on one way and it just lines up and goes into position like that. Super, super easy. Now that's on, thread in some of these new bolts. So our initial torque is 80 newton meters for the bolts. And from here, you have to go ahead and uh, rotate it 90 degrees. So I'm using a fancy torque wrench that does torque angle. But you could do the same with uh, paint markings. Next, we just got to get everything to line up. I'm kind of just threading in the axle bolt for now. And I'm feeling to make sure that the axle and those splines are engaged. So I'm twisting both the hub and the axle in different directions to make sure that those splines are definitely engaged, which they are. As nowhere near where it needs to be torque wise. Uh, but what I'm doing is like I said, I'm making sure before I commit to torquing this, that the axle and the wheel hub are engaged with each other. The only thing that keeps this together is that axle bolt. And if the splines are off a little bit, you're gonna have problems. A uh, pretty good giveaway that you're lined up appropriately. This boot is just a little collapsed here. Is if you look at the back spacing between the axle and the wheel hub, it should be identical to the other side. So basically the lip of the axle or the CV joint should be up against the back of the wheel hub and the knuckle like so. That's really the only dead giveaway that you're in the correct position. We still need to torque this center bolt, but we're gonna do that after the brakes are back on. So we're gonna reinstall our rotor with the set screw. Six millimeter Allen, again, for that set screw. We'll slide the caliper back into place. 18 millimeter. Torque spec on these caliper carrier bolts is 110 newton meters. And lastly, we have to torque our uh, axle bolt here. It's 210 newton meters plus 90 degrees. So in other words, a whole lot. All right, so that's how you go about replacing a front wheel bearing on an F30 X drive car. As you can see, it's relatively straightforward. You don't really need many tools. Uh, the front design of the axle to the wheel hub and bearing assembly is obviously pretty unique. Uh, on one level, it makes it very easy to get the axle out of the way. So you can replace those, uh, with those wheel bearing bolts or remove them and then get the wheel bearing out of there. On the flip side, you do want to be careful when you bolt it back together to make sure that the splines on the axle and the splines on that wheel hub do interface together. If you mess that up somehow, it's gonna make a whole lot of noise. You potentially risk ruining the axle and ruining the wheel bearing. So definitely wanna make sure that you're on point with that. And also, as we discussed, make sure that you have both the T60 and TP60 uh, Torx sockets, because if you have the earlier style wheel bearing installed in your car, you're gonna have those T60 fasteners. Uh, installing a new wheel bearing, you're gonna need that TP60, which, uh, you know, like we said, you might be able to get away using a T60 socket, but you have a much bigger risk of stripping out uh, the drive of the bolt. So not really worth the risk in our opinion. Uh, you can always check before you take this apart. You can see those bolts, but it's really best to have both on hand just to be 100% sure while you're doing this job. But other than that, pretty straightforward, pretty simple job. It doesn't really require that much disassembly. And you see it went very, very smooth. So uh, I think you can expect the same at home. And obviously doing this yourself, you're going to save a whole bunch of money. So definitely worth taking a chance and doing it yourself at home. Uh, but anyway, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment box below. Hit that like button if you like this video and hit subscribe. We've got lots more videos on the way. And as always, we'll see you for the next one. Thanks for watching.